Welcome to Morgellons Discussion and Microscopy Videos with your host, Jeremy Murphy. Hi, and welcome to Morgellons Disease Discussion and Microscopy Videos. I'm your host, Jeremy Murphy, and today, thank you for all of the kind feedback from my last video. You know, I wasn't expecting anybody to take that really well at all. But people are open to the idea of exploring the potential that Morgellons may be associated with syphilis. Being that syphilis is confirmed four times more often than Lyme disease every year, it should be a no-brainer that we need to take a look at this. And the research indicates that it's possible syphilis could be a key etiologic factor, something that it doesn't say about Bartonella or fungus or any other kind of disease. But it does say that syphilis could be a key etiologic factor. It's very sad to me and troubling that none of the other Morgellons organizations are talking about this aspect needing to be researched. The focus and the drive has always been on Lyme disease, and that makes sense, but that comes with problems itself. First of all being the Lyme disease test cross-reacts with syphilis, but in a recent study, the opposite is not found to be true. And what that means is that somebody with syphilis could get a false positive on a Lyme disease test. But somebody with Lyme disease isn't going to get a false positive on a syphilis test. What that means to me, syphilis is the greater of the imitators if it can imitate Lyme, but Lyme can't imitate syphilis. So what I really wanted to talk about today, however, was the Morgellons groups and why I warn people against them. I made a recent podcast on Anchor FM. I'm going to leave a link in that in the description below, but I was talking about avoiding Morgellons groups because they're really a toxic mess, uh, especially when you start getting a heterogeneous population of people who mistakenly believe they have Morgellons Morgellons and people who actually have Morgellons. You know, I find most often people that are willing to get up and get out there and start talking about Morgellons don't have evidence of the condition themselves. And if you're using Morgellons as a term to suit your needs, then you're not going to be open to the science that challenges any kind of notions you're perpetuating about that disease. One thing that's being perpetuated and a reason why I stay out of the Morgellons groups is that Morgellons patients have been done wrong, that there needs to be some kind of reconciliation, an apology. Everybody occasionally has a bad experience with the doctor. I don't think staying focused on that over what's causing the disease in the first place is beneficial to the patient population. And in fact, I see a lot of grooming in these Morgellons groups. I see people who are just learning about Morgellons coming out and talking about what kind of assholes the CDC and the IDSA are. Why? The CDC released an inconclusive study, but did demonstrate that the patients that were included in their Morgellons study had positive or equivocal Lyme disease serology. That could mean, of course, that they have syphilis, but until people are start shouting about getting that studied, we're never going to find out, right? So it seems to me like these groups are more about focusing people's anger and need for validation and attention than about figuring out exactly what's causing Morgellons specifically and what's the best method to elicit and treat it. So that's why I'm here and that's what I do and that's why I don't have problems with calling up doctors, scheduling an appointment, and then meeting with them about to discuss Morgellons. And that usually works out pretty good. If a doctor I meet with is not ready to accept that Morgellons is a real condition, majority of the patients he sees probably doesn't have Morgellons even though they've heard about it and they're complaining about it and why that's their prerogative I can still respect them despite our difference of opinion and another thing that really gets my goat people are targeted through these so-called advocacy organizations people start spreading gossip and rumors about them you've got a toxic environment controlled by a few people at the top who control the narrative so what happens is somebody stumbles into one of those groups they may have sores all over their body which could mean more gallons we wouldn't know unless we stuck a microscope in there to find out or it could just mean something else entirely like lupus and then they are coaxed to believe that the cdc conducted this fraudulent study and that there's this huge conspiracy where doctors are forcing patients to take antipsychotics yes 
There are some doctors who, because of ignorance, just don't understand the dynamics of Lyme disease or that syphilis is back because they may not have those news stories in their region, in their cities. It seems like the larger cities are seeing the more frequent increase in cases of syphilis, but the smaller rural areas haven't either caught up or aren't really looking for it as much as the big metropolises. You know, in the Bolivian study, it was stated that knowledge of the hospital staff in administering the RPR could affect those false negative outcomes. So, yeah, education is key, but it's not all Lyme disease, Lyme disease, Lyme disease. And that's another aspect about these Morgellons groups that I'm definitely against. It's just hyping the hell out of Lyme disease. Look, we have recent Morgellons research that says syphilis could be a key etiologic factor of Morgellons disease. April is STD Awareness Month. How many organizations have you heard raise concern about syphilis being a problem with Morgellons patients, even though that is thought of to be more easily treatable in the early stages? So what am I getting at? Well, I don't think that Morgellons groups are necessarily beneficial. I think the best way to address Morgellons group is, first of all, not get stuck in the mentality that uh, you're in a conspiracy where Morgellons is not accepted anywhere and any doctor you see is going to start throwing antipsychotics at you. You know, if you run into their office without an appointment, that you may get some antipsychotics thrown at you. But if you get a doctor that understands the Morgellons disease condition and can treat it and you guys can achieve measurable results, you've got a good doctor. And there's no reason why your friends who may be suffering from Morgellons as well can't see a good doctor also. And then you've got a group of people who are being responsibly treated. And that's what Morgellons patients in these groups seem to be advocating for is that better treatment. But people in these groups don't seem to want to engage in these appropriate treatment avenues. Instead, complain about the cost of them. I can't put a price on anybody's life, but if I had to, it would be invaluable. This is the only life you got. So when it came to me and the sores on my face, <laughs> cost wasn't an option. But to be honest with you, it wasn't as expensive as I was expecting based on what everybody was saying. In fact, I found the price to be quite reasonable. So things are getting better, but I think for Morgellons patients staying out of these groups and away from these organizations that are promoting this mentality that there's a conspiracy and that the CDC needs to pay, I think staying away from that kind of negativity and instead gravitating towards the doctors and physicians who they know that it's a condition that is associated with an infectious process, then that patient is going to have a better chance of recovery you know unless then if they get wrapped up in this whole everybody's gotta pay because i've got more gallons and nobody cares mentality you don't have to live your life like that i promise you can get a lime literate doctor get the issue addressed responsibly and eventually resolved so that you can resume your life and nobody's keeping anybody from doing that and in fact there are avenues for financial assistance to getting treatment but the first step has to be exiting that comfort zone and just taking the leap yeah i had to get on an airplane it was the first time i'd ever been on an airplane in my life in 2017 and i flew all the way out to washington dc because that's where my doctor practices medicine around that area man i mean it's probably the best decision I ever made in my life because I didn't realize how much of my life was missing until I got on responsible treatment that started taking care of the plaques in my brains. You know, the infection gets up there and it lives for a long time. It starts building habitats. So getting rid of those and getting your mind back on track, hey, that's the first step towards getting your life back. Once you can start thinking straight again, then you can start making some informed decisions. You know, like the decision to start making more YouTube videos while my leg's broken. What do you guys think? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. Hey, I want to uh, also put a focus on this other advocacy effort that I feel very positive about. And that is Salt in the Wound on Facebook. You guys should look this page up and find it. They post a lot of information about patients and patients being respected and about community and how beneficial those are and having a positive support network. All right, it's Wednesday and we'll see you soon.